WHDE 95.3 FM coming up. Let's go open on. We open with every generation has its purpose. Ours is to reveal the truth and reverse the brainwashing. And that's what we do here. We reverse the brainwashing. Let me get my disclaimer out the way so we can be legit. All right. The views and opinions expressed on Open Eye are those of the hosts, guests, and contributors and do not reflect the policy or position of WHDE 95.3 FM, nor our sponsor, the Delaware Center for Homeless Vets. Any content provided by Open Eyes hosts, guests, or contributors are theirs and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, company, or individual. WHDE 95.3 FM. You know, America is a place that has a strange relationship with this history with his past, okay? i tell you what Robert Kennedy said about that. There are people in every time, every land, who want to stop history in its tracks. They fear the future, mistrust the present, and invoke the security of a comfortable past, which in fact never existed. You ever seen the movie Pleasantville? It's about a guy that loves this TV show that's in black and white. It was like a 1950s show, you know, where everything was just hunky-dory. You know, it was that leave it to beaver fantasy that never existed, never existed. You know, and what, we, what, what you get from that are people that want to go back to this past, this this mythological past, because it was a mythology, right? And, you know, they, they, they miss the good old days. What they really miss is white supremacy. That's what they really miss. They really miss when they didn't have to compete. They really miss when their mediocrity didn't hold them back. Mm. You know, it, it, it's something that most of these people are silly enough to be capitalists. And if you say anything about socialism, oh my God, they lose their mind. Socialism is a scare word they have hurled at every advance the people have made in the last 20 years. This is a quote from Harry S. Truman. Socialism is what they 
called public power. Socialism is what they call social security. Socialism is what they call farm price supports. Socialism is what they call bank deposit insurance. Socialism is what they call growth of free and independent labor organizations. Socialism is their name for almost anything that helps people. And that's just stupid. Some of these people are. You know, capitalism requires an exploited class. It requires that. that that's a requirement for a, a, a successful capitalist society. There must be an underclass that can be exploited, that their labor can be exploited. Now, one of the presidents that understood that was Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in spite of his racism. Okay? He understood that in order for capitalism to be the economic system, it must be offset with a safety net for socialism. Now, all these people that cry, oh, oh, well, socialism is such a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. They are so dumb, they don't look at the fact that America is a top-heavy socialist society. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is rich people and corporations get government services for free and control most of the government. Okay? You look at, at, at the, the uh, subsidies that oil companies get. Look at the subsidies that major corporations get. That's top-heavy socialism. While those on the bottom, if they dare cry for some government support, oh, you're a socialist, you need to take care of yourself. You seen people walking around on Medicare and Medicaid these same people walking around with a social security card in their pocket, waiting for the social social security check. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on out there, but you know, yeah. Walking around with a social if you know what? If you're so much against socialism, stop collecting that social security check. If you're so much against socialism, okay, stop riding around on these roads out here. If you're so much against socialism, turn in, turn in your, or counsel your uh, Medicare and Medicaid. I have no idea. Jeez Louise. All right, all right. We're going to uh, take a short musical break here. All right, let's get our ducks in a row and we're going to move on. All right. Let's do this real quick. All right. WHGE 95.3 FM, the open eye. I'm Patrice Kidd. All right, Brother James, I see you. Thanks for joining us. All right, all right. WHGE 95.3 FM, The Open Eye. I'm your third eye optometrist and host, Patrice Gill. You know, we are the only people on the planet who are strongly, strongly encouraged to forget our history. Mm -hmm. Northern people are repeatedly told, oh, that happened in the past, get over it. Which is one of the most racist things you could say. It is becoming so intense that in many school districts, it's illegal to even breach our story. And you know what? It, it, it saddens me that too many of us are satisfied with the whitewashed, distorted, superficial, and lies that our rich history has been replaced with. The impact on our youth who ultimately come into adulthood, as we have, is immeasurable. What's up, Steve? 
We are systematically and intentionally taught that we are inferior. We are taught that every science discovery, invention, heroic act, humanitarian stories worth telling are of white men. It does not take a socialist or a psychologist to understand the profound impact of learning that no one like you contributed to humanity, or if they did, their stories, all of them can be compressed within one month in the year. Wake up, mighty Africans. Wake up. Let me tell you something. Europeans were by no means the pioneers in human civilization. Half of man's recorded history had passed before anyone in Europe could even read or write. We were building monuments, cities, and what have you before the European even came out of the cave and built a house with a window or a door. And when they did finally build a house with a window, they threw their uh, 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 human waste out the window right in the street. The priests of Kemet began to keep written records between 4,000 and 3,000 BC and probably a lot earlier than that. While pharaohs were building first pyramids, Europeans were creating nothing more than distinguished garbage heaps. It's the reality of history. And of course, what they do is they tell you that Their history started in Greece. Yeah, gee, I was talking to a friend of mine just the other night about their stories being created in, 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 in Greece. About their, uh, their, their history dating back to the, to the Greeks, who they say were the, the uh, progenitors of civilization. And the Greeks were nothing of the sort. Yeah, the Greeks could barely talk until they met Africans. Their language was nothing more than 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 um, nothing more than grunts and groans. They grunted and go ooh, ah ooh ooh ah. Okay. The Greeks studied in Africa. They put so much. It would say uh, Western civilization puts so much, gives the Greeks so much credit to starting their civilization that they hide the reality of Greek history. And we're going to get into that. We'll be right back with No Shalom. WHGE 95.3 FM, Dove and I. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, I'm trying this camera out, man. I don't know if it's even picking up. I don't know if you want to try to put that over there, but it's kind of big. So what do you think? WHGE 95.3 FM, The Open Eye. I'm Patrice Diz, joined on the air by my partner in consciousness, our intellectual surgeon, No Saroma, and the president of the Lion Song, Brother Joe. What's up, brother? What's up? Hey, 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 it's, it's been a couple of weeks, man. Yeah. He's off the air a couple of weeks. I but know, man. We back now. We signed into it. We are back. Yeah. We, yeah. we back now. I heard you too coming up the highway. Word? Boy. Yeah. I heard that. I heard that. We, uh, I was just talking about the Greeks. He said they throw it out the window. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you ever heard, uh, um, <laughs> don't throw the baby out with the bathwater? 
Nah, I ain't never heard that. That that's new for me. Okay, that's yeah, that's one of the old time saying. Seven, six years. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's one. Where that comes from? Where? Okay, the Europeans. Okay, they bathe seasonally or sometimes yearly. Oh, okay. Okay, and the way they would do it was, you know, when they took their yearly or monthly bath or right. quarterly bath or however they did it. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, it started from the oldest down to the youngest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So first, the father of the family, he would be the first one to get the clean, hot bath with him. Right. And then mom would take a bath, and the older kids would take a bath. And time it got down to the baby, all right, they do, do the baby. Oh, the bath <laughs> water was black. Uh. All right. <laughs> and, you know, they didn't left the baby in the bath water and forgot uh. it. And, hey, it's time to throw the bath water out. Wait a minute. It's, the baby's in there. He wow. Gets the yeah, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Wow. Yeah, but that's a big family, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. You know, you know, like I said, the Greeks studied in Africa. Okay. Famous, well-known Greeks, the Europeans, who we study their history and writings and study at the feet, study at the feet of ancient Egyptian scholars mm -hmm. and Kemetic scholars at the Temple of Waset. Founded in 1450. Okay. Uh, Plato was a student in, in Egypt for 11 years. Aristotle was there for 11 to 13 years. Socrates spent 15 years. Right. Euclid studied 10, 11 years. Pythagoras studied 22 years. But the course was a 40 year course. Okay. Mm -hmm. These people either dropped out or flunked out and got kicked out. Forty years, they probably some of them died. Uh, yeah, you know, but some of them they ran on back home. Okay, you ever heard? You know the saying, "A little knowledge is dangerous." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened with them. They got a little knowledge and went back home with that. And and and, and look how the Greek philosophers are looked at, like they are the, the brilliant minds of civilization. Right. Okay. All right, they were dropped out. They flunked out. Okay, that's why their society remained barbaric because they dropped out. And not only that, but the stuff that Pythagoras and Euclid and, and, and Plato and Socrates and Aristotle uh -huh. brought home from 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 Egypt scared the hell out of the Greeks. And the Greeks said, oh, these people are weird. They lost their mind. Wow. You know what? We're going to ostracize them in our society. Matter of fact, you know what? We're going to kill them. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is how fearful of knowledge the European was. Okay? And when they got in a place to do so, uh -huh. you know, there was an era in, 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 in Europe called the Dark Ages. I remember that. Yeah. 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 The Dark Ages was when the church controlled information. Mm -hmm. And the people became uncivilized again. After the Euro after the e e Egyptians, the Africans civilized them. Mm. Okay. When the um, Africans finally separated themselves from these people. Uh, right, and this is during the Dark Ages and when the church came to rise, the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? Right. These people became barbaric again. And then the Afri came, Africans came back, the Moors, and civilized them again. But it didn't take. Wow. It didn't take, yeah. Because Kemet, you know, is the beginning. It was the collegiate of the universe. Advanced study of all life and academics. Mm -hmm. The ancient Greeks trace all human invention. Now that's one thing the, the Greeks were honest about where they got it at a, a lot of times. Okay. You know, some of them lied, you know, Socrates, Aristotle, and um, Pythagoras, he claimed he, you know, he invented math and what have you did not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the Greek historians, they were really honest about it and they said, Hey, we got this from an African. This is where we learned this at. Europeans were by no means a pioneer of human civilization. Half of man's recorded history had passed before, like I said, before anyone in Europe could even read and write. The peace of Egypt kept written records. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the 
matter is that the famous well-known Greeks who we study Revere and through curriculum in today all studied in Egypt. And if you didn't know that, you know it now. Thanks for tuning in to the Open Eye. You learned something fast this morning. Uh -huh. WHVE 95.3 FM, the Open Eye. We'll be back with you more. Yeah. What's good, Steve? Sherry? Yo, everybody tuning in? <laughs> Miss Bob, what's happening, bro, bro? WHVE 95.3 FM, I'm Patrice Gibbs. No Shalom in the building. All right, all right. Yeah. You ever had black people embarrassed you in front of white people? All the time. Yeah. Man, especially when they do some real cooner stuff or, or some piss up stuff to white people. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Now, why would I bring that up? Okay, I'm going to tell you why. Tim Scott, senator from North Carolina dropped out of the presidential race up in New Hampshire, uh -huh. all right, gushing over Donald Trump. Donald Trump, I don't give a damn what you what? say. He is uh, 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 what, a third generation racist whose grandfather was so racist in 1920s America. His grandfather was so racist uh -huh. that racist white people said, oh, wait a minute. You, that's too damn racist. <laughs> we talk about white people that lynch black people, that burned down towns, that went to church. <coughs> right. Okay. And that went to church and seen lynching announced from the pulpit, said, wait a minute. Wait a minute, old man Trump. You too damn racist. We're going to lock you up for that racist stuff you did. So they locked him up? They locked that ass up. Ooh. Oh, my God, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> And Tim wow. Scott. All right. He was up on the podium in New Hampshire. And oh, oh, for those of you that are worried about the Republican primary, let me tell you something that's what's going on here. Trump has won the first two primaries, uh, the one in Iowa and the one in New Hampshire. The voter, Trump, the vo the voter turnout was something like 13%. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that means it was the Trump cult people that turned out and voted. I don't think it's something you need to be worried about. Mm. So you, you know, think so you think Trump is race super racist too because of his great great grandpa? That's what you said? Uh, well, well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you think, like this, okay? How do you come to that conclusion? How, uh, by the things that he's done. Okay. Okay. For instance, when we had um, apartment complexes in, 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 in New York, uh -huh. they had to take him and his father to court. Okay, because of their discrimination. All right, and don't forget the Central Park Five. Okay, that were accused of raping that woman. He took out a full-page ad. They were finally found. It was finally found and proven that they did not rape this woman. Right, and he still said it. He still said it. he took out a full-page ad calling for their death, calling for them to have the death penalty, even after it was proven that they didn't do it. He still came out and said, oh, they did it, they did it, we need to kill them, okay? And don't forget, wow. he was the, one of the main progenitors of the birther movement that was running around saying that uh, Barack Obama was not uh, born citizen. in America, yeah, 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 he was not a citizen. Right? Yeah, he's a racist bastard. Boom! Yeah, I thought you were going to come with something hard. Yeah, 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 I do. <laughs> Yeah. Now, Tim Scott, you know what? High-profile black conservatives tend to be cartoonishly obnoxious. Like Candace Owens. I can't stand that. Ooh, Negro the Negro Owens. I knew you. I know you don't like that girl. Oh, oh no, my I God. I can't stand that hussy. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's what it is. You know what? I like Somebody asked me, hey, would you, would you debate with, with, with Candace Owens? I know you would probably eat her ass up. Yeah, you probably right. I probably would. But I'm not going to waste my time arguing and debating with a Negro peeing bedwitch that Harriet Tubman would have shot. Pow. Bigger yeah, than that's me. That's crazy. That's what it is. And Tim Scott, he uh -huh. might be one of the goofiest ones ever. Mm -hmm. All right? And, you know, it, it's something. He, he's not quite sure the level of white one of these matchless absurd, uh, uh, absurdities that he wants to be. All right? He might not be on the on the on the absurdity of Owens and Whitlock. 
Nah, nah, nah. He's a groveling MAGA student. And he, he, he just appears to be an all too eager method actor. And you know what? It makes you cringe. You know? And when Donald Trump got up there, you know, uh, uh, what's her name? Nimrata Nikki Haley. Oh, 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 don't worry, you. You, you uh, racist, uh, Fuzzy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm coming for you today. Oh, you can believe Lord, that. Oh, Lord, uh, oh, when Lord. she was governor of South Carolina, she appointed Tim Scott a uh, 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 senator when the uh, other racist senator retired. So she found this unbelievable, uh, uh, what's his name from Django, Stephen Light, Uncle, 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 uh, uh, Ruckus, uh, Ruckus, Uncle Ruckus, yeah, Uncle Ruckus, <laughs> fool. All right, yo. So who you who you seeing in this presidential thing? Who for for uh, for for our people? Who you seeing? For who, our people, who you seeing in it? Who you seeing in it? Who you seeing in it? Well, of course, is the story's it anybody? Like Trump. Is it any? It, it, I know it can't be Biden. Uh, but Jim Crow who, Joe, you know. Is you still looking at him as? as, as uh, well, I, I'm look, just asking. I don't. You know, okay, I, here's the thing. You know, once again, we are put in the place of choosing between the lesser and two evils. All right. And, you know, our, our choices are dismal. The lesser, got, yeah. Yeah. the lesser and two evils. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, and it's like weighing, it's like weighing a, 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 a stone against a rock. All right. Right. All right. And, and, and both of them, you know. You're not going to get a good way out of either one of them. And like I said, our, our choices are dismal. The thing is, the Republicans have become so crazy and caught like behind Trump, all right? They're willing to go in for a civil war. They already shown that with the attack on the Capitol when the last, um, when, when, when Biden went into office. Yeah. You know? January 6th. Yeah. You know, wow. but Scott, I, I gotta finish this with Scott though. All right, like I said, he was he was uh, appointed by Nikki Haley, former governor of South Carolina. She's the same, you know, she's the same husky that was asked what happened. Uh, why was there a civil war? Oh, because people didn't want their freedoms right um, to be taken taken away, and their, their freedom to do what. The freedom to hold slaves. But she had this unbelievable explanation where she said nothing about slavery. And that's what the Civil War was all about. Mm -hmm. Well, Trump got up there and said, you know, did you ever think she would actually appoint you, Tim? And you're saying that about Haley during his speech. And you're the senator of her state. You must really hate her. Scott stood up there and said, you know what? I, I just love you. That's what he, this is black man said that to Trump. You know, you just as well pulled your pants down right there on stage and bent over yeah. with your voice there. So, Ooh, you do, do, do. He actually said it. I just love you. Oh my God. You know what? what? You show, uh, Tim Scott, you show up with, at the barbecue, I'm going to beat you the hell up. God, he's dead. Where'd he get this fool at? Where is he? WHGE 95.3 FM, Bowman Eye. Yo, y'all, what's good? Yo, tired, tired. What's up, man? I ain't seen you do. I see you, baby boy. Hey, yo, Sturge, what's good? Uh, good morning, Sherry. Hey, yeah, I see you, man. Brother Miss Bob, uh, the whole squad. Yo, I ain't seen my man. Uh, 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 Jardel. Jardel, who oh, my man? The other, my man. Uh, the, the one that always come out when we be out here. We used to be out here and meet us outside sometimes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, well. Yeah, you do. I do? Yeah, your boy. I can't believe his name. That's what's just crazy. Oh, okay. Oh, that's all right. He's told me that. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing something. He's doing something. WHGE 95.3 FM, the open eye. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's something we haven't talked about. It's been talked about. Um, we did mention it when the first body was found. Jackson, Mississippi. 
right? Over 200 bodies found in on on my grave behind the Jackson, Mississippi jail. And that was a lot of people that they killed in the jail and put them out back. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I, they wouldn't they wouldn't pick a body up off the street and take them. Well, mm. they would, but yeah. it, it's not most likely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, with the bizarre disappearance of Dexter Wade, which we spoke about when that first came up, uh-huh. that led to this grisly discovery. Wow. All right. The shocking discovery came months after Betterton Wade, the mother of 37-year-old Dexter Wade, filed a missing police report hoping to find her son. After a brutal six-month search with no help from Jackson, um, from Jackson, Mississippi authorities, all right, she was finally notified in August that her son had been fatally hit by a police car and buried in an armed marked cemetery, a pauper tree. And this was her second son they did this to, right? No, it was her second son to be, I think, killed by the police. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So this cop ran him over and went down the uh, uh, Home Depot and got a, a tarp, wrapped him up, took him behind the jail, and threw him in one of the graves, okay? This speech of mass genocide, 215 bodies on my grave, and people were showing up. That, you know, their family members have been missing. Come to find out, they've been buried back here in the back of this jail. Wow. And these bastards were so lazy that they didn't even dig them down six feet under. Wow. They dug shallow graves, tossed them in there. I don't know how you sat up in that police station with the stench of death wafting through the window. And well, you know it was the stench of death because vultures flying around the goddamn graveyard Ooh. digging people up and eating them. Wow. There's been no call for a federal investigation. You that know, tells you a lot right there. Also. Right there. That tells you right, a lot right there. You know, how is there no call for a federal investigation when you got 200 people, half of whom have been on the missing persons list for Lord knows how long. Now, if that was one white person in there, it would have been a federal investigation the next day. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, actually, there were a couple of white people. Uh, uh, but don't forget, they don't like poor white people. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Especially if it was some poor white people that spoke up against racism or spoke up against being poor. Wow. Okay? And they ain't no problem telling them either. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and that's, that's, that's the real crazy thing is you know, that, that you poor white people don't understand. They don't like you either. Wow. You don't understand it. You know? It, 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 it's just, it's just, it's just unbelievable in my mind. You know? And here's another crazy thing. Whenever there is a death, all right, that, that requires law enforcement to get involved, you have to have the coroner come in uh-huh. and explain why this person died. Was it a homicide? Was it a suicide? You know, was it death by natural causes? Because you done rolled up on this person that's dead, you know, and nothing had been, you know, done about that. Or, you know, we don't know why. Or the coroner tells us why. Yeah. That's right. The coroner tells us why. You know, Jackson Mayor Shakwe Anton Lumumba claimed that the incident was caused by a lack of communication. It's a black dude. How dare you call yourself Lumumba? I don't know how you got hold of that name because I know damn well that ain't your natural Ooh. name. And you gonna sit up there and with a lack of communication with the missing persons division, the coroner's office, and accident investigation. That's bizarre. Especially coming from a black man. What you need to do is be over that police station with some outside investigation, the FBI or somebody, and find out how 215 bodies are in unmarked graves unreported. Must be out your damn mind. A lack of communication. Who the hell ever died from a lack of communication? Wow. Jeez Louise. Louise. And, you know, oh, well, we, we just didn't know who the people were, and we couldn't contact the families. No, no, 
No, that's a goddamn lie. Who? Because Dexter Wade was buried with his wallet, which had his ID and other documents with his personal information. You murdered him, wrapped him up in a tarp, and threw him in the grave with the rest of the people that you bastards murdered. Wow. Just go to hell. Who? And no one was convicted or charged or blamed or nothing, nothing, right? Ain't nobody been charged or nothing. Wow. We just want to move on with this, you know. And That's sad, on. man. Yeah. yeah. You know, and see what they did was, you know, we got some distractions going on. All right. Uh -huh. You know, we got distracted by, uh, 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 what's my man's name? Uh, Cat Williams. We got distracted by, shut up, Carl. We got distracted by, uh, uh, What's his name? Todd, uh, Taraji Henson. Uh huh. And, and you know her 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 low pay on the color purple. And I heard some people say about her. No, she made twelve. No, she's worth twelve million dollars. Okay. Merv Streep is worth two hundred million. Go to hell. WHGE ninety five point three FM. Find out who's in them grades and lock some people up. This is Dove and I. Wow, yo, that's crazy, man. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah, but. Wonder how many I'm more grazes behind on, on the rest of the police station. You know? <laughs> how deep does this thing right, go? Right. Is they the only police station mm. that is, in, in that state? Or this is something that they do in every state? Or who knows? We got to check the police backyards now? Mm -hmm. we got, that's what we got to do. Hey. WHGE 95.3 FM. Do we got to check the police backyard? That's what he's saying. Yeah. yeah. You know, wow. You know, our, our, our history as African Americans is, is a beautiful thing in spite of what we suffer. Let me tell you what LBJ said. All right? You do not wipe away the scars of centuries by saying, now you're free to go where you want, do as you desire, and choose the leaders you please. You do not take a man who for years had been hobbled by chains, liberate him, bring him to the starting line of the race saying, you're free to compete with all the others and still justly believe you have com and you have been completely fair. This is the next and more profound stage of the battle for civil rights. We seek not just freedom, but opportunity. Not just legal equity, but human ability. Not just equality as a right in a theory, but equality as a fact and as a result. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's interesting that these kind of things came out of LBJ's mouth because LBJ was a Southern cracker. Woo! <laughs> yeah, he was, man. <laughs> and he run around saying the N word and this, that, and the uh. other. And he turned out to be probably the greatest president for civil rights for black people in the history of America. If it wasn't for Vietnam, LBJ probably would have, would have went down as one of the greatest presidents we had in spite of his racism. Yeah, that's what it is. You know, it was LBJ that broke it down. He said, you know, if uh, you give a, a, a poor white man somebody to look down on, you know what? As long as he feels he's better than somebody else, he, you, you can pick his pocket. That's what it is. He don't need schools or hospitals or roads or nothing. As long as he knows he's... You can take the worst white man. And this is... I'm paraphrasing something. Take the worst white man and put him up against a black man with a doctorate. All right? And convince him that he's better than him. Uh -huh. right? You ain't got to pick his pockets out. He'll give you the money. Wow. Yeah. You know, there was a time in the USA when black Americans actually did get together built their own businesses, institutions, and resources. And you know what happened? They were killed for that. Black Americans' unity was seen as a threat. Mm -hmm. When, uh, what's his name, J. Edgar Hoover, the head of the FBI, uh -huh. was asked what was the greatest threat to black America, to, to America, he didn't say the mob, he didn't say drugs, you know, he didn't say crime, he said the unity of black America. Greatest threat to America. And so why do you think they don't want black people to get together and be, become unionized? They let Italian unified. They yeah. they let Italians, yeah. Polish. I mean, every other nationality come together. Why do you think it's such a problem for black people? 
Well, because when we are left alone to our own devices and able to unify, we advance and excel at a level that they cannot compete with. And that scares the hell out of them. Okay? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, like, like I've often said, you know, there's nothing a white man with a penny hates more than a black man with a nickel. You know, you look at, 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 at lynchings, okay? Especially during the height of, of, of Jim Crow and segregation, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the black people lynched were well-dressed, all right? Most of the black men lynched were in suits because most of them were business owners, okay? And the last thing they wanted was to compete with a business owner who was just better at it, okay? You know, and drawing away not only their black customers, but even their white customers. You know, this is where uh, Ida B. Wells stepped up her game in, in the struggle. She had two friends who owned a grocery store, and what was it, in, in, in I think in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And this grocery store was doing so well that the, the white, white owners of the grocery store that competed with them, they got white people together, went after these men, lynched them, burned down their store. When Ida B. Wells wrote about it in her paper, they broke in, uh, uh, destroyed her press, and was going to kill her. She had to flee for her life. Mm. All because a black man was better in business than a white man. You know, the USA does not want black America to be independent of white America, all right? Let me tell you something. I often wonder why black people live rent-free so much in white people's minds, all right? Because the most dangerous place for a black man or a black person, man, woman, and child, mm -hmm. is in the imagination of a white person. That's why you see these towns get so bent out of shape where they see a black person in a place that they, 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 in their mind, a black person is not supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in white spaces, all right? And you want to know the reality? Research the New York City riots of 1863, the Atlanta race riots in 1906, the Tulsa, Homa, uh, uh, Tulsa, Homa, uh, Tulsa Oklahoma massacre in 1921, mm -hmm. the Rosewood massacre in 1923, the Washington, D.C. race riots in 1919. Knoxville, Tennessee, 1919. Mm -hmm. The Bridge Summer of 1919. Right? All of these, most of these riots were about whites being afraid that blacks were advancing. Wow. Yeah, right? and, and it's not really right to call them riots because what they were were racial attacks on black people. And you get like Nimrata, Nikki Haley, all right? Yeah, now, she, she, she's running for, for president, and she was asked, is the Republican Party a, a, a racist party? Oh, no. No, they're not. Not at all. As a matter of fact, America's not racist and never was. Lady, where the hell have you been? And who taught you history, all right? And why do you call yourself Nikki? Because you're of Indian descent, all right? Your parents came to America. Your father could not get a job teaching in a predominantly white institution, and he had to go teach at an HBCU, all right? Nikki Haley, who, who is of Indian descent, and when it's convenient, she calls herself a brown woman, all right? Now, she stood right up and said, America has never been a racist country. And when I was coming up, I had to face racism. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, you, within 10, 15 seconds, all right, you contradicted yourself. And the easy question is, why don't you use your real first name? Nimrata, because you want to identify white. Because Nikki is a nice white girl name. Mm. Yeah. You want to identify white, all right? So is she part of the, the um, group that's trying to erase black history out of? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, and so I just started yeah. getting up, talking that crazy mess about um, America was never a racist country. Uh-huh. And the founding fathers' what? intent, what? the founding fathers' intent, what? when they wrote, uh, uh, who, when the person who wrote the uh, Declaration of Independence, he said right in there, it was their intent, all men are created equal. Well, that was written by Thomas Jefferson, right. who over his lifetime owned 600 slaves. Mm-hmm. Okay. The founding fathers were monsters. Don't get it mixed. These people were awful people. I mean, they were monsters. Most of them were rapists. Thomas Jefferson raped 14-year-old Sally Hemings. He damn sure did. Who, over his lifetime, he owned 600 slaves. All men are created equal. He didn't mean all men. He meant all white men who were property owners because he didn't even mean all white men. Because if you weren't a property owner, and, and, and you weren't a, 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 a rich white man, you didn't even have the right to vote. And that was what he was with. They were elitist and aristocrats and a bunch of racist bastards Boom. who treated black people like animals, mm. chattel slavery, <coughs> which means slavery in perpetuity. If your mother was a slave, if your father was a slave, you were a slave. This is these people that say, well, America wasn't a racist country. Their intent was their intent was to be racist. It was started on racism, founded on racism. It was built up. The wealth was built up in the country on slavery. All right. You hear about the cotton plantation and the tobacco plantations and the and the, and the uh, uh, sugar plantations. Okay. So is it still racist right now? Uh, uh, well. Let's, let's I mean, we got our own show. We be, we we voicing our own opinion. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. I, I, how does it? How is it working right now? How is it working right now? What do people tell us when we leave the air? <laughs> you know they coming for you. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they say that all day. I'm thinking outside right now. Right now. Yeah. How many times do we come out? <laughs> And the cock cocks are parked outside. You think they ain't tuned in? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. 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 You think they? They damn sure are tuned in. Uh, That's what. You know, I walked out the out the store, all right, and the brand man who's uh, uh, delivering the bread, white uh, dude, he looks at me and sees a black man. I'm gray hair. He's like, I'm gray right. hair. I'm Sixty-two years old. Right. All right. He goes, hey, uh, buddy. <laughs> Please don't steal my truck. I could have beat him the hell up. I was say, you leave the key in it? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know I should have stolen his truck. That is not my thing. I don't do that. But he saw a black man, and the first thing in his mind was a thing. Yeah. But yeah. I think that's an individual thinking, though. That's an individual thinking. That's true. <laughs> uh, uh, that's true. I like right. that. All right. But, but we're dealing with systemic racism. Right. All right. And that's racism within the institutions of America that are part of uh, 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 the very fabric of America right, right now. Right. Right now. Right. That's right. why Nikki Haley had to, uh, 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 is running around not using her real name. Mm. You know, Nim, what's her name? Nim, Nimarada or whoever she is. Wow. But it's an Indian name and she don't want to use that. All right. Because she knows that the whites, white races won't accept her like that. Won't accept her like that. I don't like that name. Yeah. They just uh, cut yeah. her out because of the name. Yeah. Yo, that's crazy. The Murata. Wow. That, that kind of sounds black. You know? I saw uh, uh, just recently this white woman up complaining about um, well, black people name their children names that are too long and they got 25 letters in their name. Right, I see. I think I've seen that too. Yeah, but racist old yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, and just like the white girl on there told her, you can pronounce super fast and kind of literary Ashiyagodosi. Uh huh. Yeah, you know, but you can't pronounce this black person's name. Wow, you're full of stuff. You're just a racist. And then you get that same white woman, all right, right. and she's sitting in HR, and some black person is sent in their uh, uh, resume, right. and the name looks ethnic to her, what happens to that resume? It trash. goes into the trash. Ah, yes, that's crazy. Yeah. Thing, man. That's, 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 that's systemic racism. Mm-hmm. You know, I hear people say, well, you know, Dr. King, 
Because they can't believe in nonviolence, okay? Well, if you believe in nonviolence, believe in nonviolence across the board. And what I mean by that is the structural violence, all right, that is an impediment to our people advancing within this racist society. Mm -hmm. We are even now not allowed to build wealth in our homes. I saw a black couple that had a beautiful home, multi-million dollar home, right? right? And they were going to sell it. So the home had to be appraised. So they called in an appraiser, right? right. Now they knew their home was, rough, were, was over, was well, well, well worth over a million dollars. Right. This appraiser came in talking about, yeah, maybe a half a million. Okay? And the reason being is because these black people in this person's mind did not deserve the full value of their home. And so, they, they do that too, though. Yeah. Uh, it's like with all, all kind of property. Oh, yeah. If you have black people pictures on the wall mm -hmm. when they come in and all that, mm -hmm. it's devalued. It's devalued. It's yeah. devalued. Yeah. It's devalued. And what that couple did was they got a white couple to show their home to another appraiser, took down all the black stuff yeah. in the house, right? And the price almost doubled. Wow. Because it was a white person. All right? And, and how do you build generational wealth? Through property. All right? And if your uh, 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 property is devalued, okay, then you're devaluing the very life of people who live, you know, in, in, or, or want to build generational wealth. Right. So you're doing it against black people. WHBE 95.3 FM, open eye. Ooh, boy dropping science on y'all today. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> true, true. Most definitely, Sherry. She knows she used a real name. She won't get votes. That, that, that's that's real talk. Real talk. WHDE 95.3 FM, the open eye. I'm Patrice Gibbs. Most of one way. Bill. And most of one way asks, is racism still prevalent today? Yes. Is blatant Jim Crow policy making a comeback in America? It ain't never went nowhere. Nowhere? Nowhere. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 outlaw segregation in stores, restaurants, theaters, and public places in general. However, because of vehement white resistance, it took years after the act was signed for many of these places to actually be segregated. And some never really did. Many white-owned businesses that did desegregate were and still are uh, openly hostile to black customers. Look at the brothers sitting in the Starbucks minding their business and the white manager calling the cops on them for being black on a sunny day. It's against the law to be black on a sunny day in America. Don't get it mixed. Wow. 54 years after the civil rights were signed, in the, uh, uh, were signed there was a concerted effort by re resentful racist whites to maintain Jim Crow policies. Mm -hmm. The cops show up brutalize young people, you know, lock them up, young black people, for nothing. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It, 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 it's something. There was these group of, of black women golfers. Their presence on the golf course prompted the whites playing behind them to call the cops because they were playing too slow. Actually, it was the mere presence of black women that irritated and motivated these whites to call the cops, and that's it in a nutshell. The mere presence of black people is enough to make some white people react with anything from blatant hostility to outright violence. The reaction by irritated whites can lead them to call the cops once the course and get a black person killed. Or motivate hostile whites to commit violence. Case in point, a young high school freshman asked whites where his new school was located and was answered with gunfire. So obviously the current practice of white people who are, who, who are still uncomfortable with black people is to react violently or call the cops who will show up and arrest or kill black people and who have the audacity to make white people uncomfortable. You make a white person uncomfortable, Jim Crow could get you killed then, 
Jim Crow can get you killed now. Don't get it mixed. They want to keep their police um, prison. They want to keep their prison still. Oh yeah. And we are the ones that uh, they look to 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 do that. To do that. To meet them contracts that they have with yep. uh, these wardens of the prison. Mm -hmm. You got that right. You know, it, it, it's it's amazing who we are. All right. No other people. How many times have you heard me say? Have been lynched, castrated, mutilated. No other people have been systematically denied the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in America on the level black people have. By all rights of human nature, black people in America, especially those of us that know our history, we should be angry, bitter, and murderously vengeful. But we're not. It was by miracle of the Creator that we're not. WHBE 95.3 FM, the open eye. Like we always tell you, destiny determines who enters your life, but you decide who stays. Therefore, value those who value you, and then treat those as a priority who treat you as, as a hostage. I'm Patrice Beard. Mason Walmart. Thanks for joining us on Open Eye. Yaga. Peace. Peace. Yo, thank y'all for tuning in. You know what it is. Open Eye Radio. And that's what it is. And yo, Mr. Gibbs. Hey, hey. We would always tell you, global African supremacy because the play, the world was a much better place when the black man ruled. Peace.